Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 18 of my web design and programming tutorial. Here I'm going to continue going over all the different things you can do with MySQL and going through all the a lot of different statements I haven't covered previously on SQL, period. What I'm going to show you here first is, well, I have to log in, of course. Okay, so I'm logged into MySQL, and if you didn't see the previous tutorials, absolutely, you must watch them, otherwise you'll be confused. Okay, so I'm going to choose the HAM database that I've been playing around with here before, and I'm going to show you here how to create what is called a join. And the most common join is what is called an inner join, and with it you literally join the information you want into a new temporary table. And then you reference information in multiple dis different tables with what is called the dot operator, and just like this, so you type in table name and column name. And you're going to see an example of that here in one second. But first what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up all the different product types that exist inside of this database and they are all held in the product ID table and you can see a list of them all here. So here's all the product types and here's the product ID numbers. And let's say I wanted to figure out all the manufacturers that sell inkjet printers in this database. Well, I'm going to specifically look for a part identification number, then called 32, and say I, say I want to describe or show you here what is contained within a product ID table. So you can see right here, this is the part ID right here, and I'm going to specifically be looking for 32. Now let's say you just did something stupid like that, where you deleted all the information that's on your screen. Here's a shortcut to bring back the last command. Just press up on your arrow key that points up, and you can see that that comes right back. And then you can also, by the way, sort through a whole bunch of all your previous commands that you put in MySQL. So there's just a little short shortcut. Okay, so we have our product ID numbers here and we know how they're associated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up all the different tables that we're going to be using here to search for manufacturers that sell inkjet printers. So we're gonna be using the manufacturer ID table and also we're going to be using the model numbers table. We're going to really be joining the manufacturer ID table and the information contained in there with some of the information contained in the model numbers table. What we're specifically going to do is we're going to go to the model numbers table here and we're going to look for part identification numbers equal to 32. If we find one of them, we're then going to match up or look up what its manufacturer ID number is, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna link these two tables based off the manufacturer's ID numbers, and anywhere the manufacturer ID number down here has a part ID number of 32, we're gonna print out the manufacturer ID and manufacturer name to the screen. Hopefully that wasn't confusing. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it right now, if it was. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're going to use the select command followed by distinct. What this is going to do is by putting distinct in there, it's gonna guarantee that you only have values printed out once, okay? Because obviously we're gonna have many manufacturers match up for that part ID number. So by putting distinct in there, we're gonna guarantee that the manufacturer's name and manufacturer's ID number is only gonna be printed to screen once. Remember I said about the dot operator? Well here, we're going to be referencing the manufacturer ID table and the manufacturer's name. So this is the table name and this is the column name. And we're also going to look up the manufacturer ID. Then we're going to define the tables that we want to join or pull this information from, being the manufacturer ID table and the model numbers table. And if you left it right here and put a comma, this is what we would call a full join. It would join both of those tables together. But we only need part of the information, so we're gonna create an inner join. The only difference is an inner join has clauses that will define what information is needed. So, we're gonna use the where command, and we're going to insist that the manufacturer identification number is going to be equal to manufacturer ID in the table called model numbers. Right? That's what that clause does. Then we're going to put the and command in here. And we're also going to say that we want the part identification number in the table model numbers to be equal to 32. And if all that holds, we want to print all that information to screen in alphabetical order based off of the manufacturer name. And if we hit enter here, you could say that it did just that. It went in and it located all the part identification numbers equal to 32, and then found all the manufacturer ID numbers that also had a part ID number of 32, 
and then matched up the manufacturer ID numbers in the manufacturer ID table and printed out the manufacturer name and the manufacturer ID number for all of those things that qualified. So you can see in this database, these are all the guys that sell inkjet printers in this database. And if you didn't quite get that, I'm gonna be doing a bunch of tutorials, which is gonna demonstrate this technique over and over and over again, because this is something that's done a lot in web design, this sort of joining of tables and pulling information based off of very specific values. So you'll get it over the next couple tutorials. So let's do some things that are a little bit less complicated. So what I'm gonna do here is use the customer database, which is a lot less confusing. And you can see here the tables that are currently in it. And I'm gonna be playing around in the customer table. So let's take a look at all the information that's inside of there. And I previously talked about foreign keys and primary keys and so forth and so on. And in MySQL, you technically can't really create foreign keys. However, you can kind of fudge that. And if you define what are called indexes, which are you know, what you're gonna assign an index is gonna be something that would be a foreign key. So like phone ID is gonna be one of your foreign keys and state ID as a foreign key and order ID as a foreign key. Well, if you want to speed up your database dramatically, what you need to do is actually tell MySQL that, hey, these are indexes. So just think of it as a different sort of name and how you define these guys as being indexes. Let me zoom in here a little bit so you can see everything here a little bit better, is you use the command, and I'm gonna make this an uppercase, alter, table, and I'm gonna say customer, and I'm gonna put in here, add an index on the column called state ID, just like that. Now all of a sudden this guy is going to be an index and it's going to be a lot easier to analyze the information and search through this table. And you can see right here, whenever we call this an index, whenever we create an index, this is defining to MySQL that this guy can have the same value multiple times. And the reason why we called it an index instead of what is called a unique index is because of course we're gonna have a lot of people who live in the same state in this database. Let's get rid of that. And also, just so you get it, I'm gonna create another index for the telephone numbers. If you wanted to actually see how to remove an index, let's come in here and say drop index. Like let's say you decide that you do not want an index associated anymore. You just type in drop index and the name of the column you associated an index with followed by on and the name of your table. And you can see that we came in here and this is no longer an index, but this guy right here is. And I previously talked about what are called unique indexes. Those would be indexes in which all the values contained within them are going to be completely unique. How you would create that is by putting alter table, customer in this situation, add unique state ID, for example. And you can see right there, this is gonna dramatically speed up all of your searches in your database. However, you have to make sure that you fit into the qualifications. And what's really crazy is there's one other type of index and guess what it is called? It is called primary key, okay? So that's for all the people out there that want to create foreign keys and speed up their database access. That's exactly how you would do it. And if you wanted to create an index for a column that doesn't exist currently in your table, you would use the create command create index, and then you would type in the index name on, and whatever your table name would be. And you could actually type in multiple columns inside of here if you wanted to. And it would automatically create indexes for all those different columns. So there's another little command that you can do. And let's say in our customer table, we actually wanna create what is called a comments column, which is going to contain text in which we describe how much we like our customers. So just come in here and click on add column and whatever you want that column to be called and say that's gonna have a variable number of characters of 40. As you can see now we have the comments column inside of here and we're allowing null to be a value inside of it. But let's say we realize after we create this column that we actually need more than 40 characters to describe our customers. Well, again, here comes the alter command for you. Just type in alter table, the name of your table, change, column, and remember, everything that's in uppercase is a command. Everything that's in lowercase are references to either columns or tables or what have you. 
And we're going to say we want it to be of type text because we want to be able to type in as much information as we want. And now you can see it's been switched to type text. And what's great about this is we're going to be able to actually come in here and create what is called a full text index. And what that's going to allow us to do is very quickly and easily and very precisely search throughout the comments column and look for very specific information. And after I describe one more command, we're going to do just that. So let's say you wanted to change the name of your table. This isn't often done, but just to show you all the different things Alter can do, I'm going to actually go over here. What you do is type in Alter Table Customer, type in Rename as, and whatever you want your new table name to be. And if you issue that command, the table previously called Customer will now be renamed to New Table Name. And now I'll show you how to create a full text index on our comments column so that you'll be able to perform really precise searches on it. Just do this, type in comments, right like that. Alter table customer, add full text index to the column name comments. And you can see now it has the ability to contain the multiple values. And what's really neat about this is now I can perform very precise searches. So let's say I come in here. Currently, I have one person inside of here, inside of the database, one customer. And the information's a bit squished. So this is me, and this is a fake address, and this is all kinds of information. So I have one customer inside of here. And I have nothing contained in comment because I created this information, or I inserted this information before I even created this column called comment. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to jump in here and enter a couple other customers real fast just so we have a couple more in here. So here I'm using the insert command in the customer tables and I'm entering a new customer called Sally Smith and I'm using the SHA function right here. What this is going to do is convert her password monkey2 into an encrypted code password. It's going to look like this. And here you can see that since I do have the comments field created, I'm going to actually type in right here, really nice lady who loves cats. Okay, so there's a new customer that I just inserted in there. And I'm going to put another guy in here, Paul Smith, which is going to be Sally's husband. And I'm going to put somebody else in here named Mark Marks. Obviously, these are all fake people. Okay, so now if we look at our customer table, you can see that we now have four different people inside of here. But you can also see that I don't have a comment next to my name. This field is empty. Comments. I know this is messy, but I'm keeping this big so you can read it. And it's not going to matter here in a second. And if you need any of this code, it's all available on the website. So let's say I wanted to come in here and actually type in a comment for myself. How exactly would I do that? Easily. Type in update, name of the table, set, and the column that I want to update or change. And type in something like crazy man who has two cats named Peekaboo and Sophie. And then I'm going to put in a clause here. Customer ID is equal to five. And I'm getting that right here. That's where that five's coming from. And let's just say I type in comments. That's all I want to see here. Customer ID is equal to five. And you can see that I popped up all that new information that I just inserted into this guy. Now what's really neat is I can perform full text searches on these comments and look for very specific information. So let's say I wanted to pull out the first name and last name and comments from the customer table where there is a match in the column called comments against crazy. And then you have to type in in boolean mod. And you're going to see that my name actually matches for the word crazy in the comments section, right like that. But there are other crazy customers, potentially. How can I perform other searches? Well, just like in regular expressions and so forth, there are other really cool ways to search. So I'm going to just blatantly copy this guy right here against... And instead, I'm going to put a catch-all. And basically, it's going to return results if anywhere in the comment section, there is the letter C-R-A-Z. Chances are that's going to be crazy or a reference to crazy. And you put a wildcard character or a star inside of there. And then, again, Boolean mode. Boom. Now you can see it returns both Mark and mine because craziest and crazy match here, being the letter C-R-A-Z followed by whatever else could possibly go there. And another thing you could do is, again, I'm just going to paste the screen again, exactly that same line, except this time what I'm going to do 
is say that I am looking for any matches for craze followed by any other letters, and I'm putting a plus sign saying that this absolutely must be in the comment section. But then I'm going to put in a negative sign, and with that negative sign, I'm going to say, as long as the word cat does not exist anywhere in the comments. So that's what the negative sign in front of there does. And then this is the wild card that you saw already in Boolean mode. Boom. And you can see now that mark matches because it matched for the word craziest inside of here. But it didn't return me this time because Mark likes dogs. And there's no mention of cats in his comment section. And there is a reference to cats in my comment section. So there's a whole bunch of really kind of crazy things you can do with MySQL. I'm going to provide a link to a bunch of articles that go more into joins and so forth and so on. But because I wanted to make this tutorial more interactive with a ton of examples, I'm going to continue doing that and get more into PHP and MySQL in the next tutorial. If you have any other questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, till next time.